The Earned Income Tax Credit, or EITC, as the name implies, is part of the U.S. federal income tax system. Over the past two decades, the EITC has expanded dramatically and is now a much larger program in terms of both dollars spent and individuals receiving the credit than TANF. In this module, we'll learn about how the EITC is structured and a bit about its effects on the poor and on work incentives. As this graph from an earlier module shows, the EITC cost approximately $68 billion in 2014 and went to roughly 28 million households. Growth in spending on the EITC, shown here, is striking. Since the 1990s, there has been a clear reversal in the relative prominence of cash welfare versus the EITC and support for low-income working families through the tax system. Our first step is to explain how the EITC works. Unlike traditional means-tested assistance programs, no poor individuals go to an EITC office to apply for benefits. Rather, when individuals file their usual annual federal tax return, earned income levels may make them eligible for a refundable tax credit for the EITC. Specifically, earned income is reported on individuals' tax forms and taxes are calculated after taking standard deductions and exemptions using the relevant marginal tax rate. If they are eligible for the EITC based on their level of earned income, individuals simply subtract the EITC amount from their taxes owed. The EITC is a refundable tax credit, which means that if taxes owed minus the EITC is negative, individuals will receive a refund for the difference. This chart shows the basic structure of how an EITC amount is calculated. Schedules vary by whether taxes are filed individually or jointly with a spouse. This example is for single filers. Focusing on the line for filers with a single dependent or single qualifying child, the amount of the EITC increases with earnings until earnings reach approximately $10,000 per year. For an individual earning $5,000 per year, for example, the EITC amount would be roughly $1,800. For those earning between ten dollars and $18,000 per year, the EITC amount would be just over $3,000. Finally, at earnings levels above $18,000, the amount of the credit begins to decrease with earnings until it is phased out completely at earned income of around $38,000. The EITC is not only delivered to poor families in a very different way than traditional welfare programs, it also creates a very different set of incentives. We discussed, and we'll talk more in later modules, about the idea that many welfare programs have the potential to encourage dependency and reduce the incentive to work. One reason the EITC enjoys broad support by policymakers from a variety of perspectives is that its structure tends to encourage work in many cases. Specifically, by raising the after-tax wage, the EITC should encourage labor force participation by those just on the margin between working and not. Research has confirmed that, especially for single parents with children, for whom incentives are strongest, the EITC seems to encourage individuals who would otherwise not work to work. It's also true, however, that in theory, the EITC may discourage work among individuals who are close to the phase-out portion of earnings. If earning more or working more hours means that your EITC amount will fall, that reduces the effective after-tax wage of another hour of work. There is some evidence of small negative effects of the EITC on work for this group, but overall it is thought to have largely positive effects on employment incentives. We know from tabulations based on the SPM that the EITC raises the after-tax incomes of many of the working poor. In 2014, poverty would have been over 18% without the EITC, rather than that year's SPM rate of 15.3%. Also measured in 1994, the EITC is estimated to have moved roughly 6 million individuals out of poverty. This ignores potential changes in behavior caused by the EITC, but given its positive effects on work, those changes would likely increase its overall effect on poverty. An important limitation of the EITC as a component of the safety net is that it is available only for those individuals with earned income and who file taxes. Of course, this is precisely what gives the EITC its desirable, positive employment incentives. On the other hand, it also means that the EITC cannot address poverty or serve as an effective part of the safety net for those with employment challenges. 
A more subtle version of this point is that among low-wage individuals, the EITC may not be very responsive to short-term disruptions in their earnings. Return to our chart of EITC amounts. Imagine a low-wage worker who initially earns roughly $11,000 per year. If that worker loses a job or has her hours reduced so that her earned income falls to say $8,000 per year, her EITC tax credit will fall as well. This means that just at a time when such a worker might need additional assistance from the safety net, her benefit amount will be reduced. While the EITC's unique features are desirable for some circumstances and work incentives, they also have certain limitations. The EITC has altered the nature of our safety net and refocused a major part of it on supporting the working poor. In later modules, we'll learn about the connection between labor markets and poverty and about the ways in which safety net programs create positive and negative incentives for workers.